Chances are you may have heard of a game called Pow World, a game where you can mass produce items with the help of your pals. Well, what if you could do that in Minecraft? Thanks to this mod, you can! Introducing Create Pixelmon, a mod which combines the automation of Create with the whimsy of Pixelmon. Now, unlike Pow World, you can't force your Pokemon into a labor camp, but you can still automate items. And for me, that's a big deal. While playing Pixelmon, crafting Pokeballs was so annoying. You have to grow apricorns, harvest them, bake them, craft them into lids, and that's only half the process. You still gotta make an iron base, which requires you to go mining, which means crafting tools, mining coal. I'm not trying to do all that, I just wanna catch Pokemon. You can also automate potion production, allowing your Pokemon to fight in even the toughest of battles. But in this video, I'm gonna keep it simple. Today, I'm making a Pokeball factory, and joining me is my friend and local Pokemon expert, Quinton, who just so happens to have his own channel. Quinton, what do you know about Create? I, I know absolutely nothing. I'm a noob. I don't know anything about Create. So, things are gonna be, well... When I put something here, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I, I broke it by accident. Yeah, this should be fun. Let's make some Pokeballs while trying not to get hurt in the process. You wanna play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code DOUBLESAL at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. I can make Quint in this Pokeball factory, but he doesn't know how Create works, so it was time to switch to Plan B. You know, I think we're gonna have to learn together. Okay, so, you know what? We're gonna scrap all of this. We're gonna start from square mm -hmm. one, okay? I was gonna have to teach him the basics, from simple cobblestone generators to how to use power sources. But the biggest issue was teaching him how to make an assembly line. And you're gonna put the funnel right here on this side of the chest. Okay. Wait, oh, I think I messed it up. If you, if you get close to the... What is he doing? <laughs> is he what is, what is Lydon doing? But my biggest mistake was thinking that Quentin could do it all on his own with only 10 minutes of training. Should I let you spread your wings and fly? And what, try to make it on myself? All right, I'll start you off, okay? All he had to do was make the red half of a Pokeball. To do this, Quentin was gonna have to cook three apricorns with a campfire that was placed above an encased fan. The apricorns then needed to go into a mechanical crafter where they'd be combined to form the lid. Easy, right? So you'll just try to get the apricorns from here to there. From and I, you said you have furnace in the middle? So I put lava? Okay. No, so you need to put a fan there. Oh, you just murdered all these Pokemon. How do you do this? How do I do this? That's crazy. Okay, this is actually impossible. <laughs> this is really tough to watch. It's so easy. No, it's not. This is okay. impossible. Here. You just... See, like, you know, I, I, like I taught a noob how to build and create. Oh, no. 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 No, no, no. I said to put one on fire. You're trying to stop lava with wood? What? You're trying to put out a fire with gasoline. I'm about to cheat, bro. My head's hurting right now. <laughs> this design is going to be identical to this design. You got a furnace here, oh. and we have a chest oh. here. So. Oh. Why do you keep going back to the furnace? There's no furnace in this design. It also didn't help that Quinton was easily distracted by topics other than the task at hand. Uh, one piece. One piece. The one piece. The one piece. Anyways. Bro, double cell soap tastes good. Meow. Yeah. So all you gotta do is connect this cog to that cog. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a way of doing it. If I let these apricorns out, they're not gonna go into the crafter because they need what? It goes right here. A furnace. Uh, Why do you go yes. furnace? Okay, yeah, the, yes. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Whoa, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Is this the most painful coaching session you've ever had? Yes, it's actually not this hard. So, yeah, that didn't go exactly as planned. I mean, we had the right idea, but the execution left much to be desired. Let's try that again, and hopefully we'll be left with something we can be proud of. I've said it before and I'll say it again, all good things start with a good cobblestone generator. I also incorporated a basic iron farm design. For this machine, you're also gonna need a few mechanical crafters. Both crafters will be responsible for crafting the upper and lower part of the Pokeball. After that, you need to install a mixer that will combine all the items together to form your Pokeball. Now that we know all that goes into this machine, this is how it works. 
To create your infinite supply of Pokeballs, you're gonna have to start with the cobblestone generator. With the help of a drill, the cobblestone is gonna be broken, and then it's gonna be ground up in a millstone. Connected to the millstone is a funnel, where the ground up cobblestone, now gravel, is gonna be washed by a fan. When the gravel is washed, it has a chance of being converted into an iron nugget, and after that, it's dropped into a basin where it's pressed into an iron ingot. The ingot makes its way out of the basin and moves towards the mechanical crafters. Once inside, the three ingots are combined to form the bottom half, which is referred to as an iron base. The next item to make is a stone button. All you gotta do is make some cobblestone, smelt it with a lava fan, and then with one mechanical crafter, you convert it from stone into a button. And of course, we do have to craft the apricorns into the upper half of the pokeball, but that you already know how to do. Once all the ingredients meet in the basin, they are mixed up, and there you go, you have a Pokeball. But we can't just end it like that. It is very unlikely to leave a machine just exposed out in the open. I'm gonna surround this machine with the appropriate facade. One that's true to Pokemon lore. The headquarters of the company responsible for the Master Ball, I'm building the Silphco building. Now when it comes to the Silphco building and its design, it's actually pretty simple. You have the foundation, which in my opinion has the most detail, and then after that it's just layer after layer of basically the same thing, just windows. With the lower level now complete, I had an idea. I took out a schematic and copied the first window layer. Once I had that blueprint, it was pretty much smooth sailing. All I had to do was paste the blueprint multiple times until the building was the appropriate height. Now this plan was much better than building each floor one by one, because there were like seven or eight floors. Once the building was the proper height, I then had to work on the roof, and on top of the roof was this long semicircular dome, this type of skylight. I also wanted to match the roof's specific shade of purple, and I felt that the purple block best matched that. I continued to work on the roof and struggled with Pokemon who just loved to get in the way. But aside from that, the building was almost complete. The only thing left to do now was to install the glass that would make up the skylight. And once that was done, everything was finished, except for these little details I wanted to add right here. They weren't essential, but I just wanted to get the building just right, and you can see in the sprite that there are lines there. The building was now complete, and I gotta say it was fairly accurate to the sprite design. Not 100%, but you know what you're looking at. You can tell that this is supposed to be the Silphco building. But of course, we cannot forget about the interior of the Silphco building, so the next thing I started working on was the lobby. Now, if you've played the Gen 1 games of Pokemon, then you are familiar with the Silphco lobby. It's big, wide, it's got two big fountains in the middle. It's kind of simple, but with the space that we have, we're gonna have to make some deductions. I did my best to replicate the color palette of the interior with the blocks that I had available to me. I also made sure to keep these blocks vanilla, that way if you wanted to import this building into your Minecraft world, you could, at least without having to worry about installing extra mods. I tried to replicate every single detail, from every item on the walls to even the furniture in the lobby itself. I added these wall lights, and behind the actual lobby, I made sure to add a glass pane railing. There you have it, the lobby of the Silphco building. Like I said before, it's not entirely accurate, but it's pretty good for Minecraft. There it is, friends, the Pokeball Factory. If you're into Pixelmon and you love the Create mod, I highly recommend this mod. The link is in the description below. And if you want my design, the download is available on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. This has been Double Sal. Have a good one.